This is an interpersonal communication project, HSCO 508 for Liberty University. Slide. My name is Jeffrey Job. I live in Huntington, West Virginia. I'm a clinical instructor for the medical imaging program at St. Mary's Medical Center. I'm married for 27 years with two children, both boys, 124 and 120. Uh, I'm studying in the counseling area because of my association with the school and hopefully it will be beneficial with any problems that might come up with any of our students. Slide. What is interpersonal communication and how does it make me a better listener? Well, Stuart said that interpersonal communication simply means that people involved are communicating as persons, which means that culture, collaboration, identities, and conversation are all part of the communication process. Burley Allen says that listening skills can take charge of situations and influence their outcomes. That effective listening reduces stress and tension. Slide. My overarching goal is to become a better listener through learned techniques, which in turn leads to becoming a better communicator because of increased dialogue that has been obtained. Slide. Now, background and behavioral blend. We did a profile of my uniquely you profile and it showed a couple things about me that some were expected and some not so expected to me anyway and it showed that uh, I think others expect me to be cautious and calculating that I'm respected for my finished product but I frustrate others for taking too long to finish the task I stand out when getting a job done people look to me to solve problems I am task oriented but not good at multitasking not good at multitasking is one I really relate with and that's simply because I'm one of those people that likes to make lists, I like to check those things off, I'll draw a line through it to indicate that it has had completion. And when I multitask, I have a problem with that because I'm trying to, show, to juggle two things at once and I kind of struggle with that task. Slide. Now, this is my, or this is me profile, shows that I'm a DSC personality type. And I can see that in some ways. I stand out in many ways, it says, but do not seek being the center of attention, which is true. I need to be more friendly and work on my charisma. People respect my strong convictions, but I lack enthusiasm to show all that I have going for me. It tells me that I'm sort of a task-driven person, driven. And I, I agree with that thing. That's, again, it goes back to my list taking. I like to uh, have a project. I like to work on it till it's completion. Uh, and that gives me a sense of accomplishment when I do that. Slide. Continuing on. Uh, working in a hospital has pr produced both positive and negative communication and listening habits. Um, negatively, it's caused me to communicate quickly with patients because we're always looking to that next patient. We're trying to get the patients in and out as quickly as possible because they don't feel well, but we also know there's someone behind them that doesn't feel well. And this sort of causes my pace with that patient not to be good because it doesn't allow me to spend the time with them to actually hear everything they're saying and I think that has affected the way I listen in some ways. Now possibly it does allow me or it has allowed me to communicate better with people because I have seen so many different races and cultures and I feel like that has broadened my ability to see diversity in people. Now working in the education part of the hospital or in the school uh, it has allowed me to speak in front of large groups and as well as one-on-one -on -one with students. And I believe this has uh, started to teach me a little bit about being a better listener. Slide. Now, communication barriers. Peterson discussed avoiding the 10 communication traps. He talked about ritual listening. Ritual listening. Well, it looks like friendly listening, but it's not. It's waiting for them to finish and shut up so you can uh, make your point. And then there's the Perry Mason people. Those are the ones that disguise their statements or accusations with questions. They want to carry their own agenda. Now the why people, those are people that have hidden agendas with having an accusing tone. The not people, they try to guide talkers toward new insights or options. The I understand people, it suggests we do not know how to respond. We are uncomfortable with the topic. Then there's the asking for one word answers. That tends to stop the conversation when you're, when you're asking questions uh, that have one word responses that kind of kills the conversation. Then there's the yes but people. And those usually mean no. When using it as a listener, we stop listening and are talking instead. They're the you're not listening to me people. And those are usually things that we do with coworkers or family members. We feel like they're not listening and getting what we're, we're, we're saying. We get frustrated and just say you're not listening. Then there's the fixing it. And that's I want call a consultant, not a wife people. 
And that's the desire to help others' problems. It's, it's our desire to give advice for wrenching away the problems from the speaker. And then you have the screens of all sizes. And that's the people who have phones, iPads, where they use Skyping and FaceTime uh, as a barrier to communication. Slide. Continuing on with communication barriers, Burley Allen listed several listening biases uh, that interrupt uh, the conversation. Hearing what you want to hear, not what you're actually is what not actually what is being said. Past experiences tend to filter out what the listeners uh, is saying, and you're anxious to hear something that fulfills your own wishes or desires. You think you know what they're going to say, so you kind of hear what you want to hear, not what they're actually saying. Then you have biased listening. We labeled information ahead of time as unimportant or boring or nothing new, and we're just anxious to the speaker to get to the point. And emotional biases, those are hot button items for you. We have an emotional re reason for not wanting to talk about it. Maybe it could be uh, politics or religion or something like that. Physical barriers, certain types of day fatigue. Uh, certain parts of the day, if you're having a meeting late in the day, your fatigue actually can cause you to, to daydream more. Your energy level, energy level is low, and it, that's a physical barrier for your listening. Then there's somatic bar barriers. And that's our belief or a cause to have different meanings for words that others might have a different meaning for. No two people have exactly the same meaning for the same word or expression. Meanings are not words. Meanings are in people. And then Bodhi said that distinguishing between what listening is and what listeners do is the key to have better communication and not causing those barriers. Slide. Now, social media has probably become one of the bigger problems that we've had in communication barrier. Because of social media, we have Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, Snapchat, Tumblr, Pinterest. All these are, you know, fine for people to have, but the, the problem is, as an example, my wife and I were out to dinner and there was four people, five people sitting at a table beside us, and all of them had their, uh, one had an iPad, the other three had their, their phones out, and none of them were talk, talking to each other. So when you have that, uh, it's kind of a, to me, that's a hesitant, because you're hesitant because it's going to cause your barriers to get bigger and bigger. Uh, another thing is texting. And my kids have had this problem. Man, one will be in the front seat, one will be in the back seat in the vehicle, and they actually, instead of talking to each other across the seat, they actually text each other. So I think these are new barriers that we need to think about uh, with our communication. Slide. Now, resources and strategy. Stuart described inhaling and exhaling as a metaphor for communicating. Uh, listen first on inhaling and then speaking on exhaling after you've received the information from the speaker. So. Peterson talked about using the talker listener card, another way to, to hopefully uh, help our communication. It's a physical card that's just a reminder that when this card says speaker, you're the one who's to speak, everyone is to listen to that person, and then it gets moved to the next person and they're allowed their time to speak. That way everyone has their own opportunity to speak and then also to listen. Avoiding barriers to prevent us from being a good listener, according to Burley Allen. Now, good slide. Now we have an action plan. Recognizing any communication needs, either listening or speaking, that, and using any resources that are available to learn ways to be a better communicator. Stewart says communication consists mainly of getting your ideas across. Berger says that word of mouth communication helps us to determine the emotion of the speaker, which in turn shows us how our emotion will play to the conversation. And that's true because face to face, one on one, you get to see uh, nonverbal communication. You get to see how the patient or the the person is reacting. And that's going to help you uh, with your communication. The TLC communication, using Peterson's talker listener card, and trying to use it especially in group discussions. And hopefully uh, to become a better level one listener to all set in all settings, whether one-on-one -on -one or in a large group, as detailed by Burley Allen. Slide. Enlarging the conversation. We need to realize that there is more than one way to communicate. Many factors guide us through a conversation, understanding the meaning to why we stand what we say and why we listen more intently at some times than others. We need to assess our own strength and weaknesses in a conversation and work to correct our shortcoming. Set goals in a conversation and listen and understand what is being said. And speaking only to my point is being made, is being made and then giving the, op the opportunity for the other person to then speak. Slide. And in conclusion, communication is where humanness happens. It is what connects everyone. Race, culture, religion, or even species need communication. For most, it is what keeps us going. It is the opportunity to share thoughts through communication. It helps us to form bonds with one another that transcends age 
or anything that in turn helps us to feel human. Thank you.